Hi and welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses. Today we are going on with this fabulous collection of stories about Tom Doran's More Than a Horseman. So today's story comes from Diane Davis. In 1987, I had the opportunity to meet Tom and Margaret Dorans at their home in Central California. On that first occasion, Tom asked if we would like to ride along. Tom needed to go help a friend that was having trouble with the horse. From previous conversations with the owner, Tom was aware of the problem the owner was having getting on the horse. Tom watched the horse and rider behaviour while, while being saddled. Then Tom watched as with each attempt by the rider to put a foot in the stirrup, the horse would get troubled and gather himself up to run off. The horse had come with lots of problems. The new owner seemed to be doing things the right way to get on. When Tom quietly approached the horse and rider, it was amazing to watch what little if effort Tom had to use before you were able to see a change in the horse's attitude. I was very fortunate to be there that day and see Tom's gentle manner and approach to get the horse headed in the right direction. At any one of Tom's horsemanship clinics, a lady was having trouble, I'm sorry, not to anyone, at one of Tom's horsemanship clinics, a lady was having trouble loading her horse. Tom watched her make several attempts to load the horse and the horse was getting more stressed with each attempt. Tom then said to the owner, see that patch of grass over there? Take him to the grass and let him eat for a while. Tom went on talking and working with the other horses and in a short time, Tom told the owner, I think your horse has had enough grass. Let's try to see if he's ready to load. Tom suggested to the owner to look forward and walk like there was never a past problem with loading. There was a change in the horse. He had become very relaxed with a little verbal coaching from Tom, the owner was leading the horse in and out of the trailer. You would never know that this horse had a problem in the past. Tom was unique in the way he could see where the horse was at and what the horse needed at the time. On another occasion, there was a child with a bad temper, crying and throwing tantrums. The parents were unable to control the unruly child. He was disrupting Tom's presentation. Tom was sitting on his swivel chair. He held out his arms to the child who hesitated for a second, then came over to Tom. Tom was able to sit the child on his lap and continue his lecture to the crowd. It was remarkable to see how quiet and content the youngster was sitting there on his lap and listening to Tom. On another, oh sorry, a group of us <laughs> were sitting around listening to Tom sharing stories. One fellow was telling Tom that after working his colt, he got scared of the jacket and bucked him off. Tom laughed, he said, you might have let go of the jacket a little sooner and you might not have got bucked off. And that is so true. Sometimes we get in too big a hurry and forget where the horse is at. Tom wanted us to work without upsetting the horse. Tom was helping a fellow working a colt in the round pen when a little dog showed up running outside the fence, making a lot of noise barking. Tom said to the fellow in the round pen, take your flag and the next time the little dogs come running by, just tap the top rail with your flag. Make sure you do it without looking at the little dog. You don't want to insult him. You just want him to walk off quietly. The dog continued to cause a disturbance. The fellow in the round pen reached out and tapped the top rail as Tom had directed him to do. It was amazing to see the dog's reaction. He stopped and then just walked away just as Tom had said he would, and he did not come back. Tom was unique. 
Each situation is different, not a steady routine. There was nothing to buy, no special tools. Tom had a great laugh, wit and dry sense of humour. Tom inspired so many that there was a better way to work with the horse. To have had the opportunity to meet Tom Dorrance was an experience beyond words. Yes, definitely would be my number one person if I could um, meet someone who's already dead. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time and keep on tuning into the light. <laughs>